Welcome to the sheds. We are shedding light on issues affecting you. As long as it is important to you, as long as it affects your life, we will talk about it here. The purpose is to ensure that we address all these issues and help you further take the conversation in your own space. I'm not alone. My name is Nyanso Chegu. Thank you, Zimol. I'm all right. I'm all right, I'm all right. 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 I see you are all black today, Mflakas. Yes, 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 Mflakas. But I'm not in mourning or anything. I'm just fine. You are happy. Today we are shedding light on load shedding, on electricity, on issues of energy. How come we are where we are, Mflakas? How did you get to the situation where electricity goes for four hours, for six hours, or the whole day in some instances? There's load shedding, there's load reduction, there's load limiting, there's all sorts of things, Mflakas. That's what we're talking about, Mflakas, and load shedding affects you. Yes. What is one thing, Mflakas, that has definitely put you off, or that is a direct result of load shedding? I'll tell you mine. Mm. I've had to fix a refrigerator because of load shedding. This happened, Mflakas, in the middle of the month where mm. I had nothing. I had to fix it, Mflakas. And, and, and a geezer as well. And a geezer as well. Yes. I've, I've heard, I think, I mean, and I'm, I think it's not only me, Mflakas, a lot of people. Mm. I've had my appliances bro breaking down, Mflakas. I've had TV to fix. Mm. I had the stove now, mm. there was uh, electricity stove, mm. broken because of load shedding. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's, it's taking a toll. Yeah, it's it's bad. And, and I'm sure you also have had an issue with uh, electricity and load shedding. Yeah. But to help us and to take us through this issue of load shedding and energy, we have our energy and economic independent analyst. He's a well-known man who knows what he's talking about. Mm. He's not trying to find out whether or not. He's not taking chances. Mm. We're talking about Tsepo Khadim. Welcome, Tsepo so that means that I'm, yes, yes, right. But if it's if I'm speaking as a collective, I would say So at the end of this show, we can say Yes. I'll say that there are some And pile, a conto. No, th thanks a lot, man, and, and thanks for joining us. Thanks. Uh, we're hoping to extract a lot from you, from your expert advice, from your expert knowledge, and all of that. But before we start, I know Nkwasana is a question that is always meaning to ask, yes. and, and that question will keep us going. Yeah, before we get ahead of ourselves, I've got a burning question. Yeah. Normally, Mr. Khadima, we want to find out about our guests, a little bit of where did they come from? Who is Mr. Tsepo Khadima? Where did you grow up? And, and, and yeah, um, so you know my name. Uh, I am um, of the Botswana tribe. I'm a Mukhata. All right. Um, and um, I grew up in two places, which is uh, a place in Limpopo. Okay. And that's where the mistake happens, by the way, because people think it's important. Then they say, but you must be paid. I was they about realize to ask that you now. And, and there's a bit of history, by the way, to mm. that. Kadima, I want us to extract more mm. from your knowledge about uh, energy, about economy. And I want to ask, when do you become involved in issues relating to energy, and which then saw you becoming a known energy expert whom want to do to advise us on how to deal with electricity and things like that. But uh, for the benefit of our viewers, mm. so to know that where, how to become involved in energy is it? Energy, w w when do you get interested in energy and how do you move mm. in that space to where you are now? Yeah, I wasn't set out to say that I'll be interested in energy, but mm. you know, one of the, the blessings that I had in, in my life was that of being in investment banking. So when you go in the area, because you have a business degree, mm. so when you get into the world of banking, and you do investment banking, mm. and you have an opportunity of working on various sectors yes. and doing transactions, then you determine, okay, which area do I find opportunity? Mm. So the investment banking that I do is in terms of what they call equity capital markets. In simple terms, it just means that you take businesses public onto a stock exchange, yes. and then obviously raise the capital that they require to a listing, what they call an initial public uh, offering. Mm. But in that, when you are having to assess the viability of a business, the projects, mm. you get to have a insider's look into that business, yeah. interrogate, because you can't make a decision and a recommendation mm. on whether that business or structure it accordingly unless you understand it. Mm. So you are uh, required to, in the first instance, understand the business, the industry, so many things about that 
particular business before we can even get to what they call financial close, meaning, mm. yes, now we can proceed, you know, uh, monies can now be, um, you know, be put in the company. Yeah, yeah. be, mm -hmm. be ex expensed or put in the company through, through whatever means. And, and that helped me to work across several sectors. Mm. And, and just very briefly, because, you know, because of time, mm. I'll tell you this. In 2003, I sat down with a friend because I'd been doing a lot of work um, in investment banking. So I sat down with a friend and looked at that. South Africa had just promulgated a law called the Minerals and Petroleum Resource Development Act of mm. 2002. Mm. So there was the introduction of use it or lose it because in those days, the minerals were concentrated in general mining, which was a national, Nationalist Party creation mm. and uh, uh, the Oppenheimer family yes, yes, yes. through the Anglo. Mm. There yes. was really, those were really the two, they were the chamber of mines, these mm. two. Wow. Okay. So the Minerals and Petroleum Resource Development Act was to liberalize and bring about new entrants. Mm. And you know, the JSE, the, what they call a counter, the resource counter, meaning mm. mining companies, mm. lost 92 billion rent of value because there was opposition Jeez. from the establishment that yeah, we can't yeah. allow any other person, more so black people, to be yeah. involved in mining. Yeah. And the, I'm not sure if he's still alive, uh, Barry, Barry Davidson was the guy who was running Anglo Platinum at the time. Mm. He went on a global roadshow to say that this Minerals and Petroleum Research Development Act is a disaster for the economy, it must not be allowed Should and everything else. But South Africa, I think, needs to be thankful to the former Minister of Mineral Resources, mm. Uh, Dr. Pums Nam Lambon. Yeah. Because she insisted, or she notwithstanding, it, yes. with uh, the support of President Mbeki, mm. that that law is passed, signed, and came into effect in 2004. Mm -hmm. On the 1st of May, mm. it became effective. Oh, okay. Cool, uh, cool. Uh, the minerals and, and that, I tell you, it changed because it meant that there was nationalization of our natural resources. Mm. As to why we are not benefiting as a country from the natural resources is a subject for another day. Yeah. But so in 2003, I sat with a friend on Good Friday in Santon, and we said, you know, based on this, that's going to happen when this law comes into effect. There are opportunities. Mm. We think that platinum is going to be the way to go. Mm. Mm. And let's start a company. So we started a company. Mm -hmm went around, raised capital, told people we are going to list it on the main board of the Johannesburg Securities Exchange, mm. which, by the way, had rules. Mm. One of the rules was that you can only list a business if it has got a three-year profit history. <laughs> so okay. here we were, we we're going to list on the main board no profit, a, a no business nothing. that has no mm. revenue. Forget mm. profit. He's talking about uh, revenue, a lot of companies today are losing revenue. A lot of, a lot of revenue. households are losing money. Businesses are closing, struggling to survive, all because of electricity, all because of load shedding. We are where we are today. Just briefly, in two minutes, Mr. Khatima, how did we get to where we are as a country and how do we move forward? What are the solutions? Most importantly, how do households get to survive? Okay. Can load shedding be ended? Yes. My categorical answer is yes. Load shedding can be ended, and it can be ended within 90 days, within three months. Wow. Three will, months? Yeah. Wow. Will load shedding be ended? I doubt that very much. Load shedding will not be ended for the basic reason that it is the most profitable criminal enterprise <laughs> in the country, that because of load shedding, there's a, a distinct criminal class that earns over 80 billion rent a year. Name them. And, uh, well, I'll, let me name the sectors they're in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So any, anybody who tells you that yep. they can have a wind turbine or have a solar panel supplying electricity onto a high voltage grid, mm. that person is nothing but a sophisticated criminal. Yeah. Okay. Because the laws of physics don't make it possible. They don't allow. What that person is lying to the nation and telling them is that they have rewritten the laws of physics. The question I always ask, why has the Nobel uh, Committee not given them a Nobel Peace, Peace Prize, Prize yes. for having rewritten the laws of physics? <laughs> because th there are certain... Uh, mm. The grid of South Africa mm. was designed to run on baseload electricity. 
it was never designed to run on intermittent energy. Mm -hmm. Intermittent energy meaning that it cannot give you energy on demand. Yes. So it's the, the solar uh, power oh, comes in yeah. as and when the sun is shining. When yeah. the sun is not shining, it's today is a bit cloudy, mm -hmm. overcast, so you're not getting the same volume of electricity yeah. that you would have gotten. So that is on the one hand. Wind also, when the wind... But when you are running a grid, there are also certain physical limitations. One of them is that the grid must have a thing they call inertia, meaning mm -hmm. you must run at a frequency. That mm -hmm. frequency, you have got very little uh, room mm -hmm. for deviation in terms of 50 hertz. 50 hertz just means that the electrons are oscillating mm. 50 times per second. Mm. And hence you need to synchronize a power station with that uh, wire on mm. a pylon mm. on a grid mm. so that that electricity is what they call alternating current. Mm. So that cannot uh, be the solution. And yet South Africa today mm. spends 143 million rent every day paying these so-called independent power producers of renewable energy who deliver zero because 100% of their power is redundant, meaning it is not usable in the grid. So that is the one section. So anybody who's operating a solar or a wind turbine, that person is just a sophisticated crook. They are a thief. Because for years and years, we've been asking them to say, show me one meter which tells me this power that you purport to have produced, show me where it ended up. Mm -hmm. They cannot show you for the simple reason that it doesn't get delivered anywhere. Those are mm -hmm. on the one hand. On the other hand, then you've got these other people that mm -hmm. have cut for themselves a very nice deal of selling diesel mm -hmm. into ESCOM and saying that you can run okay. a power station. So ESCOM has got two power stations, Horegua and Ankerlech mm -hmm. in the Western Cape. Then there's uh, another uh, two power stations that are running on diesel, mm. the Deza and Avon. Okay. And then you've got two other, one is Johannesburg listed company, and the another one is a German uh, multinational mm. that also are running generators. Mm. They are all burning diesel. Mm. Now the problem is the following. When you are using diesel power, those generators are not designed to run for more than 11 hours a day. Okay. ESCOM has been running their generators for almost 16 hours a day. So mm. the question now, and, and I have been absolutely horrified yeah. to hear the so-called Minister of Electricity, Dr. Hossein Suramukhopa, saying he has secured 30 billion rand. Mm. Now I can tell you now, categorically, mm. the diesel generators of ESCOM, it doesn't matter even if you were to run them 24-7. They cannot use 30 billion rand worth of diesel. Is he lying? So the question becomes, mm -hmm. why would he go on, you know, to the public and say, the people of South Africa, we've got 30 billion rand with the hope that we can reduce load mm -hmm. shedding. Mm -hmm. Of course it won't work, mm -hmm. but also it's theft for a simple mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. Electricity in South Africa is regulated in terms of a tariff, yes. meaning what the customer pays. Mm -hmm. But the cost of producing electricity is not regulated. Okay. And that is where mm -hmm. the thieving, that is where the corruption mm -hmm. lies because mm -hmm. then the cost yeah. becomes what you determine. Mm -hmm. There's no one who's saying to you, that's the right cost or not yes, the right yes, cost. Yes, yes, yes. So if you take a decision to use diesel, mm -hmm. what does that tell us about you? More so when ESCOM, the demand in this country now is around 29,000 megawatts. Mm -hmm. 2015, the demand was 34,000 megawatts. Mm -hmm. ESCOM in terms of coal, power stations yes. has got 47,000 megawatts of installed capacity. When you can add another 1,800 megawatts of nuclear. Mm. So it means that we are sitting with almost 50,000, just over 50,000 megawatts mm. of base load power, meaning power that is available on demand. Mm. But that capacity over the years, ESCOM took a decision to shut down those units. Mm. And as a result, they've now created by design. So you've got mining companies that has, have got coal contracts, mm. but they never have an obligation to deliver a wheelbarrow, oh. and they get paid also. So these are the groups of people, and then you've got others that say we'll offer security. Then you've got other companies that they say we will maintain the plant and equipment. Mm. ESCOM should have itself been maintaining its own plant and equipment. It does not need a third party or to a do, contractor to do, job, yeah. to do that. But all of that is an 80 billion rent a year criminal enterprise 
which ESCOM has to record mm -hmm. it as mm -hmm. fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Mm -hmm. That is where the, that is the heart of our yeah. problem mm -hmm. as a nation. But now, because it is such a profitable enterprise, mm -hmm. anybody who gets appointed to be the CEO of ESCOM and brings to an end this criminal enterprise, mm -hmm. that person, I can assure you, their safety for more than a week will not be guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Unless you take, which is what I'm calling for, yes. that the CEO of ESCOM must receive the same level of VIP protection as you accord mm -hmm. to the President of the Republic. Mm -hmm. That is what we need to do, because that's how serious it is. Mm -hmm. So when you hear what Andre De Reiter was saying, oh, there's one billion rent a month. Yes. Well, Andre De Reiter effectively was, mm -hmm. cre was protecting this criminal enterprise mm -hmm. and picking up on the small guy. Mm -hmm. Because the small guy seeing how big this thing is, yes. they also have been the so-called coal mafia, but these are just small guys. Mm. Because you know, coal is not like a loaf mm. of bread. In a loaf of bread, we can bake it in the morning. Yeah. By 10 o'clock, there'll be no evidence mm. of it. Mm. But coal, mm. even in a buggy, mm. you can't do that. Mr. Khadima, if you're to be a CEO of ESCOM, yeah. what are your priorities? What would you do if you were to go into ESCOM as a CEO? Well, what, what first, you, I mean, what, the, the, I'm plan? hearing that there's a short list of five people. I'm not on that short list. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But uh, okay. I have been calling that whoever that is to be interviewed must be interviewed publicly, mm -hmm. must tell the people of South Africa, present mm -hmm. a plan, mm -hmm. a measurable, yes, practicable plan. plan. Mm -hmm. And that practicable plan will include, first and foremost, ESCOM must go back to the basics. Yeah. ESCOM must produce electricity from coal and nuclear. Okay. Simple. Coal today, there is technology where you can use coal, burn coal without emissions. Mm. And so therefore the issue of that we need to reduce emissions, we can have another debate, but you can burn coal without emissions. Mm. That technology is available, that is mm. what ESCOM should have been mm. focusing on, mm. on the one instance. Mm. And also ESCOM must cancel all the take or pay coal contracts, mm. whereby coal mining companies are getting money without delivering a wheelbarrow mm. of coal. Of coal yes. mm. And they are being paid for more than 20 Not even a truck, a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow. <laughs> they, but they get paid <laughs> billions wow. yeah. every year. So you need to cut that. Mm. You need to cancel all the so-called intermittent. The middlemen. The middle, yeah. Even the guys that are selling electricity. Mm. How can ESCOM be uh, the tariff is 2 rand 23 cents mm. now mm. if you buy ESCOM, uh, power from ESCOM directly? Mm. But ordinary people at home, people at home are paying between three rand forty eight cents. Some of them will be paying over four rand a kilowatt Both hour of on the prepaid. Mm -mm. And the question is, why would ESCOM do a prepaid? Because the prepaid market yes. is an additional fourteen billion rand <laughs> looting, meaning mm. they are stealing from the users of electricity. Mm. There is no basis mm. for a middleman to mm. sell anything. Mm. So that's, those are really the issues. That if you stop that and stop the use of diesel. Mm. You save 80 billion rand, mm. you can then reduce the tariff. The tariff in South Africa, and I'm saying this sincerely, mm -hmm. it must be one rand 16 cents a kilowatt hour. Anything more than one rand 16 cents a kilowatt hour, you are being robbed mm. blind, the people of South Africa. That I can tell you without fear of shadow. And I'm challenging anyone yeah. in government sure. at ESCOM yeah. to prove me wrong that the tariff is one rand 16 cents and they will never ever do it, I can bet you now. But the people of South Africa must stand up mm -hmm. and fight off this grand robbery that is happening the, on them. The crooks, Mr. Khadima, remain in charge. So load shedding will persist. How do we survive? Just, just one minute advice, basic things, communities out there who can't survive with, how do we survive? Well, look, very few people, to start with, Gas is an option that people should use, uh, okay. liquid petroleum gas in, mm. a, you know, in a canister. But also remember South Africa closed most of the, four of the six refineries have been closed, so we've mm. got a shortage of LP gas. Mm. Uh, but it's an option. Okay. If you put in a solar uh, panel on your roof, you'll probably be able to charge your phone, watch television, power a fridge, mm. you can't have heat. Mm. So mm. in the middle of the winter, we're gonna freeze. Mm. People are then going to resort to using baola, yes. which means that they are gonna be going burning to the, to the, yeah. coal, <laughs> and if they burn Old coal, days. it's now going to increase the respiratory illnesses. Mm. But that mm. is the difficulty people are facing. Yeah. People are gonna use cow dung, mm. they're gonna use wood, they're gonna mm. use paraffin, yeah. because mm. they need heat mm. at home. Mm. So those are the difficulties we are facing. Mm. What we should be demanding mm. is simply that if this government, and this government, by the way, led by President Sora Maposa, has now admitted that it has failed. So the plea that people like myself are making, mm. 
why don't they just resign and let's have a government that can be able to take us out of this situation because ESCOM still has got the capacity to provide us with cheap, abundant electricity. That is what we are asking for. That is the solution. All these other things to be to this criminal gang mm. that is stealing you know, hundreds of billions. Now they want to take it up of 100 billion rent, but energy, meaning electricity, will not be available and lives are gonna be lost. People in hospitals, people that need oxygen, people at home. So that the are president this. must go and everybody else so that we can- Well, he has people. admitted that he has no solution. He has mm, been trying to mm, do this mm, thing mm, since, but he employs unlawful means. Mm. And that is why I'm calling for him mm. to rather go and resign because every solution he, he, he proposes is unlawful, including the appointment of the Minister mm. of Electricity mm -hmm. is unlawful. He should know that the appointment of the Minister of Electricity violates mm. five, mm. Uh, four laws and one code called the King Report on Corporate Governance. Mm. But four acts of parliament are violated by just simply saying, I have a Minister of Electricity here. Yeah, Mr. Kadima, let's end it there. Yeah. It's clear that we're not going to finish this now. Yes. But what is even clearer yeah. is that we need new leadership new government, we need people like him mm. to be part of the solutions that are given in this country for us to be able to yeah. defeat load shedding. Anything else, Mr. Khaz? We have one minute. One minute, Mr. Khadima. Is there a possibility of a stage 10 load shedding? And what does that mean, in short? 30 seconds. No, no, there's no such thing called stage 10, and, okay. and they, they know this. Okay, every time when they tell you that we've got higher stages of load shedding, what they are not telling you is that they are switching off the transmission lines. Yeah. Mm. They are no longer just switching off the distribution lines. Okay. Okay. That makes the system vulnerable, meaning the thieves. If you tell the thieves, you say, look, over the next 18 months, yeah. I'm going to be load shedding at higher stages, yeah. you are telling them, guys, must say rounding. Zan, yeah. Yeah. Zan say rounding. Yeah, yeah. Then we're gonna take off the pylons, and mm. they're gonna take off a pylon that is the most critical, mm. which is gonna cause equipment failure, mm. meaning the total grid Shuffling. of the country mm. will shut Can't down. That is the risk that we are facing. Sure. So therefore, they must not even mention this that mm. they're gonna have a higher stage of load shedding because they are inviting the criminal gangs. Mm. If the criminal gangs could take the overhead traction line on a rail line mm. from Musina to mm. Cape Town. Mm. What more yeah, about yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, a yeah. pylon that you just yeah. need a spanner? Exactly. You don't need <laughs> to take a spanner to take it down. Yeah, it like down. Yeah. That's Thanks a lot, Mr. Khadima. We thank you Mr. very Khadima. much for your insight. You are definitely going to come back. There's a lot that we have not touched on, which we want to touch on. Uh, follow us on social media, The Sheds. Just search for The Sheds on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. We are on YouTube as well, and we're shedding light on all issues affecting you. Feel free to make suggestion of anything you'd like to, yeah, ask to talk comment about. There. Yeah. Or anything that they want. Yes, any yes, you must comment to and, and, and make sure that you don't just watch, but subscribe, yes. so that you bring in the latest uh, content. Yeah, it's good, 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 it's good